Church, and welcome to another wonderful Wednesday night. It's uh, my privilege to stand before you once again to deliver an awesome word, I'm hoping. Uh, tonight, uh, I have a, a word that God has placed on my heart, and I'm hoping that, that it reaches out to you and speaks to you. So, uh, once again, thank you for tuning in, for joining us on our Wednesdays. Don't forget about our Sunday morning services. You're more than welcome to come in as we are having in-person service. I just want to make sure to, that, to, to put that out there. Uh, we want to make sure that, that you know that we are here for us to, to come together, fellowship, and get together, and uh, enjoy the Word. Uh, but tonight, uh, once again, I have the privilege of, of standing before you to give this Word. And uh, once again, I, I count it an honor to stand before you every time that I stand here because it's an amazing miracle that I, I have this ability to stand before you. The fact that I have an opportunity and God's given me this ability... Is, is always truly a gift to me. And every time that I stand here, it, it kind of puts me in awe of that fact of where I was and, and where God has brought me. But tonight, um, the title of my message tonight is being used. Uh, once again, we, we are not having scripture up on, on the screen, so I encourage you, grab your phone, grab your Bible, whatever means you use for, for reading the Word so that you can read along with me and verify that what I'm saying is the same thing that's being uh, read in your Bible, because the more word we get in, the better the better off we'll be. Amen. So let me start off by opening up in prayer, and uh, we'll get going down this road. Father God, I thank you, Father God, for this day. I thank you for this time that you've given me. I pray this word that you placed in my heart goes out, Father God, that it be effective, that it be challenging, Lord. That your words would go out and cut, Father God. That it, would, that it would be out there, Father God, that it would challenge a heart, Father God. And I pray tonight, Father God, that as these words are being listened to, as your words are being, being read, Father God, that it would be powerful to, to affect change in our lives, Father God, in our mentality, in our hearts, and in our minds, Father God. I pray tonight, Father God, for your powerful word. In Jesus' name, amen. So, for this past year, we, we've been going through and enduring these challenges that, that have come come upon us. And we're getting back to some type of normalcy here. And with that being said, the responsibility is going to lay on us to carry the weight. Now you're saying, well, Ben, what do you mean by that? Well, let me, let me go to my base scripture here of, of Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 through 38. Now, this is a, a, a familiar scripture to a lot of people. If you've read your Bible, if you've been around for a while, you've heard this scripture used many times. But once again, uh, all scripture is good for us to, to, to read, to understand, to digest in our spirit and within us for, for us to move forward. Uh, let me start off uh, Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 through 38. 35, it says, Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them, because they were weary and scattered, like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest truly is plentiful, but the labors are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers, into his harvest. Now, as a young disciple growing up in, in the faith, this, this scripture was used to motivate men to go out and minister. This was used to get our attention to say, hey, there's a there's a, a people out there, there's your friends out there, there are your co-workers out there that need to be reached. And likewise. This is, this is why I'm using this, this scripture. And you're saying, well, I get it. The laborers are few. And if you've ever been in ministry, you understand. Anytime that there's been an outreach called, anytime that there's uh, functions or, or uh, any, any church uh, challenges that are put out, there are a certain few people that will always be there. But it always gets easier with the more people that are there. And that's the desire. That's our desire as, as ministers, that we motivate people to get involved, that we motivate people to, to focus on, hey, you know what? 
God's given me this awesome gift. But I need to use it. I want to go out. I want to, I want to preach. I want to teach. I want to learn. I want to do all these things. It's, it's that motivation that you see the way we get things done. You see the way things are done. And you learn and you, you transform and you use those, those things that you learn from us to go above us. At least that's the desire, you know, as, as disciples. You know, we use that word a lot, disciples. And I'm going to get back to that word, but uh, let, me, let me just kind of move forward a little bit. So, when I got saved, uh, the church that I attended was, was nothing easy to, to be just an attender. Uh, I, always, I always look at, at the church that I went to as a transforming place. Because there was no way that, I, that any man would be able to walk into that church and not be questioned or requested or asked to help in some way. And once again, we come to this, this word of disciple. Discipleship is an important thing. But discipleship means nothing without the disciple. And in order for you to deem yourself a disciple, you have to want to be used. And now I want to I want to I want to go over this real quick because that that word being used has a negative uh, connotation to it. It's looked at negatively or bad because in the world being used is not a good thing. But I want to I want to make this clear. When you allow yourself to be used by Christ, it is always for your benefit. It is used to help you grow. It is used to help you to, to be an impact in this world. It is used to transform you, your mind, your heart, your soul. It is used by God as the opportunity to transform who you are. But you have to be willing to be used to call yourself, say, a disciple. So what does it take? What does it take to be used? Not much. Not much. But the question starts off with, do you want to be used? So, like I said, back in the world, if I asked that question, you would say, no, I don't want to be used. But in the kingdom of God, it is a different story. The more that you're open to, the more your heart is open to, the more the Spirit of God in you that is open to being used, the more power of God that you feel. The more that you get to see how God moves and changes and, and affects your life. We have to be willing. See, because without, without a disciple, there are no leaders. Without, without leaders, who are we? See, because we all we all want to build on each other. See, when I came into the came into the fellowship of Christ, it was automatically coming into a, to a strong amount of men that were willing to impart into me what they had learned. And as long as I was there, as long as I was there, uh, willing to be used, I learned. I learned how they led. I saw how they accomplished the things that they did. And I looked up to these men and said, okay, I want to be like that. The jobs they had, the careers they had, the successes that they had. All were being seen by me. Because I was willing to be used. I was willing to place myself somewhere to be used. So when the call came to go testify, to go outreach, to go minister on the sidewalk, you know what? I'll go. I'll go. I, wanna, I, I may not be able to get it done. I may not be able to do what you're asking me to do, but I want to go see how it gets done. And it's that type of willingness that we need to have today because there are people that are going to be coming to the Lord and we are the ones that are going to affect that. How much God changes in this world will be dependent on how much He changes in, in us. Now, I got these scriptures for you, and once again, they, I want you to read them, and I want you to pray about these scriptures, because these are powerful scriptures to me. 
first one is 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 through 20. The second is going to be Romans chapter 14, 5 through 8. So starting off with the first scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 through 20, it says, 19, Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So, in the scripture, you see the price that was paid was not light. Your salvation didn't come free. And it's, it's basically telling you, look, you don't belong to yourself anymore. When you belong to yourself, that's when all the problems happen. That's where all the, the dysfunction was happening. When you thought you knew best, when you were doing things by your own might, by your own strength, that's, that's when you were your own. But now that you've come and you've given your life to Christ, you are not your own. You are Christ. And when you place your life in Christ's hands, the responsibility lays on Him to provide. Not yourself. On God. And see, we skip over that. We don't understand that when we lay down our life, we are not responsible now. We've given our life over to Christ. And when we wholly give our life over to Christ, He's the one that's in charge. That's why when you hear so many people testify of how God moved, or we were in this tra uh, transition, or we were in this trial, or we were financially hurting, and God moved, and God provided. Those are people that submitted their lives and said, you know what, this responsibility does not lay on me because I've given my life over to Christ. I'm in His hands. I am under His protection. I have placed myself under Him. We are not our own. Let me say that again. We are not our own. We were bought at a price. Romans 14, 5 through 8, starting at verse 5, it says, One person esteems one day above another. Another esteems every day alike. Let each be fully convinced of his own mind, in his own mind. He who observes the day, observes it to the Lord. And he who does not observe the day, to the Lord he does not observe it. He who eats, eats to the Lord. For he gives God thanks. And he, does, uh, and he who does not eat, to the Lord he does not eat, and gives God thanks. For none of us lives to himself, and no one dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. Once again, another powerful scripture. We are not living for ourselves, and we don't, we don't necessarily see that when we, when we come into this salvation. We don't recognize it right away. See, because we're still trying to get ourselves together, trying to understand what we received, what we've gained, what we've been forgiven for is, is mostly what I remember. I remember thinking to myself, this is awesome to, to receive this forgiveness. It's, it's more than I could ever, ever have expected. But once, once the world starts falling off of you and God starts moving within you and starts cleansing your mind and starts cleansing your thoughts, you begin to open your eyes to see this wider picture, this bigger picture going on all around you. We understand that the keys of life and death are in our hands. And day by day we get to make that choice. Whether we're going to choose life or we're going to choose death. And, and these moments and these times where we say, okay, is, is, is this decision leading to life or is this decision leading to death? We get to choose now. It's not just an automatic, we go with the flow. We get to choose. And in that freedom comes the opportunity. We either use that opportunity and that freedom to better ourselves through Christ or remain the same. Because there's, al there's always this moving forward and we have to understand this. Just like water flows, 
A, a water or a pond that sits is toxic. But water that flows is clean and good for use. And in the same way, if we remain the same, we're going to get toxic. But if we continue to move, as, as the Bible tells us, we are to move forward. God cleanses us and cleanses us and cleanses us and cleanses us as much as it takes for us to be used by Him. Once again, all on this idea that we're willing to be used. Because we have to come to the decision whether we will be used or not. Whether we will yield to the power or not. Whether we will obey or not. Whether we will submit or not. And I know these words are not easy and, and a lot of people... Uh, have a hard time with these words, but submitting, obeying, these are good things in the Lord. These are for our benefit. They're for our safety. See, you, you read through the scriptures and you begin to understand those people that trusted in God were rewarded. But those that didn't, that doubted, suffered. And in the same way, this same, I can tell you in, in my past experiences, when I failed to obey, when I failed to submit, I was in pain. I was hurt. By whatever the trial was, whatever the situation was, and I had to get back to being obedient to God. I had to get back to submitting myself to His authority, to His power, to His strength. But once again, we have to be willing. Do you want to be used? Because being used has a cost. Let me move on to our next scripture. Uh, Matthew chapter 20, verses 20 through 28. I'll repeat that. Matthew chapter 20, verses 20 through 28. So, starting in verse 20, it says, Then the mother of Zebedee's sons came to him with her son, kneeling down and asking something of, uh, from him. And he said to her, What do you wish? She said to him, Grant that these two sons of mine may sit, one on your right hand and the other on your left hand, in your kingdom. Now imagine being the disciple and your mom is the one asking Christ. She's the one petitioning for you. And especially amongst all the other disciples. You'd have to picture that on, on your own. I'm going to leave that one alone. Verse 22. But Jesus answered and said, You do not know what you ask. Are you able to drink the cup that I am about to drink and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They said to him, We are able. So he said to them, You will indeed drink my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it is for those for whom it is prepared by my Father. Verse 24. And when the ten heard it, they were greatly displeased with the two brothers. But Jesus called them to himself and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those who are great exercise authority over them. Yet it shall not be so among you, but whoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servant. And whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give life a ransom for many. So important points here. Jesus emphasized, if you want to be great, serve. And there is a lot of truth in that. If you're willing to be used, if you're willing to submit yourself to what goes on in this church and in the body. God will use you. God will show you. God will transform you by your willingness to be used. He said, if you want to be great, be a servant. And you know what? You want to know why that is? Because that's where you learn. That's really where you learn. If you desire to be a leader, you know what? First and foremost, you have to be a good follower. You have to be able to see and learn. You have to be able to listen and obey. That's what makes a good leader. 
Someone that has gone through those trials, gone through those issues, has sat there and been patient and learned from a leader. So I want to make thing, something clear. We show by our actions what we mean. See, it's good to say that I, I'm, I'm willing to be used. It's good to say that I'm a disciple. But if my actions don't reinforce that, then it's meaningless. We have to be willing to be doers of the word, not just hearers. Because that's what people are going to watch. That's what people are going to see. Whether we're willing to do what we say and mean what we say or not. That's what's going to have an impact in our world. That's what's going to have an impact in our friends, our family, our co-workers. That they see it. That we're not just about our words. We're about our actions and what we're willing to do. Now I wanted to share this scripture with you. Uh, I've used it many times in my, in my preaching. Uh, it's 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12, uh, starting with verse 12. And this is the body of Christ. But I want to key in on one scripture. I challenge you, go read that. Read that whole scripture. Because it gives you a, a perspective of what it is that we're looking at here. But verse 27, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27. It says, you are, uh, now you are the body of Christ and members individually. Let me repeat that. Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. Meaning, we have an identity in this. We have a part in this. We are the hands and feet of God. And we are who He uses to affect the change in this world. But we have to be willing. We have to be willing. We have to submit ourselves. We have to be obedient. And those are choices because God will never make you do anything you don't want to do. But with that being said, we have to take an honest evaluation of our heart. And in the scripture, when you, when you go through, you understand that there's two, two sides. We either have a heart of flesh, or we have a heart of spirit. Which one we have is dependent on us. It is dependent on our choices. It is dependent on our actions. It is dependent on what we do. Whether we're being willing, whether we're willing to be used or not. See, in order, in order for you to be effective, you have to be willing. So when we look back at what it is that God has done, the price that was paid, once again, going back to our initial scripture, we are not our own. And I make sure to remind myself every once in a while that I am not my own. I remember real well what it was to be on my own, to make the decisions of my own and getting the consequences for those decisions. I have a closing scripture, and it's Mark chapter 9, verses 33 to 35. If you would turn with me there. Mark chapter 9, 33 to 35. Starting in verse 33, it says, Then he came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What was it you disputed amongst yourselves on the road? But they kept silent. This is Jesus talking, talking about the disciples. But they kept silent. For on the road they had disputed amongst themselves who would be the greatest. And he sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, If anyone desires to be first, he shall be last of all and servant of all. Now I use this scripture to kind of point out something. We're going back to the whole what is, it, what is it that you desire? And I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to simplify this. And once again, this is my own words. 
We have to desire to put someone else ahead of us. We have to desire to see someone do better than us. Because that's, hap that's what happens when you disciple. Your desire is that you train somebody to be better than you. That they will learn and see more than you. And that they will accomplish more than you. In this scripture, it's, it, it, it's basically laying out. Can you desire to put someone ahead of you? Because that's what really makes a, a great person. A compassion for people. And depending on how much we're willing to be used, says what we believe in that state. Let me go back to our initial scripture, Matthew chapter 9, verse 37. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are We need a desire to be used. Because there is a harvest coming. And we need to be the hands and feet of Christ. We have to desire to put people ahead of us. We have to have compassion on the people that are blind, that don't understand. We have to have compassion on our co-workers, our friends, our family. And it's through us that they will see the love of Christ. But we have to be willing to be used. In order for us to be effective harvesters, we have to be effective followers. Followers of Christ, followers of our pastor, followers of our leaders. That's how we accomplish doing the work. How awesome we will get to see God move in our lives is dependent on that choice, whether we'll be willing to be used or not. Um, once again, please make sure that you join us whenever these church doors are open. I encourage you to come, fellowship with us, get the word in. And be around people that are willing to serve God. Because those are the people that will inspire you and direct you on how to do it. Amen. I hope you enjoyed this word tonight and I hope it had its effect. I pray that this night be with you a good and blessed day.